In this module, we're going to be talking about characteristics of substances. So first, let's talk about physical properties of substances. Right, there we go. Physical properties are characterized as either intensive or extensive. So intensive properties do not depend on the amount of matter or quality of a sample. This could be color, hardiness, melting point, boiling point, density, ductility, malleability, specific heat, temperature, concentration, and magnetization. Extensive properties do depend on the amount of matter or quantity of a sample. So this could be the volume, mass, weight, energy, entropy, number of moles, and electrical charge. Physical properties can be measured without altering the substances. This includes melting points, boiling points, freezing points, volume, viscosity, and density. Volume measures the amount of space that a substance occupies. Viscosity measures a substance's resistance to motion when, it's, when force is applied. Density measures the amount of mass a substance has per unit. Density is measured in units of mass or weight per volume. So density equals mass over volume. If an object is more dense than water, it will sink when placed in water. And if it is less dense, then it will float. The density of hot and cold water is different because the molecules in hot water move faster and are slightly further apart. Melting point is the temperature when a substance in solid form becomes a liquid. And boiling point is the temperature when a liquid substance boils and turns to vapor. Freezing point is the temperature when a substance in a liquid form becomes solid. Mass is a measure of the amount of substance in an object and weight is a measure of the gravitational pull on earth on the object. Physical state of matter, there are solid, liquid, and gas. Homogeneous mixtures are a mixture in which the composition is uniform throughout the mixture, example salt water. And heterogeneous mixture is a mixture in which the composition is not uniform throughout the mixture. So this could be vegetable soup where each spoonful contains a different amount of ingredients. So if we look over here, we have a substance. If there's only one present, we could say yes. So it would be an element or a compound and there are different phases it can be in. So it can be in solid, gas, or liquid. If we have more than one substance, it can be a homogeneous or heterogeneous mixture. So this is some terms to kind of know and memorize. So physical properties also include specific heat, which is the heat capacity per unit mass. There is conduction, which is the heat flow from a region of high to low temperatures. Conduction is a form of heat transfer that requires contact. Melting, boiling, and freezing points are scientific measures in units called degrees Kelvin. In the solid phase, molecules are firmly packed and held in place by atomic bonds. In the liquid phase, molecules are still relatively closely packed but have vibrational motion. In the gas phase, molecules are widely separated and move about freely at high speeds. And changes in states of matter or phase changes can be endothermic, requiring heat, or exothermic, giving off heat. As a substance is heated, the molecular forces bind, binding its molecule together are broken and the molecules begin to move away from each other. Again, a lot of terms to memorize. All right, so let's look at more physical properties. So it is important to know all of these terms because you need to know the different types of physical properties. So what condensation is, what vaporization is, freezing, sublimination, all of these you wanna make sure you memorize. So vaporization occurs when liquid heats to a gas. Condensation is when a gas cools to a liquid. Melting occurs when a solid heats to become a liquid. Freezing is when a liquid cools to become a solid. Sublimination occurs when a solid heats to become a gas. Deposition is when a gas cools to become a solid. The triple point is the temperature and pressure at which all three states of matter can exist. 
and the critical point is the temperature and pressure at which the liquid and gas phase become identical for a pure stable substance. So if we look over here, we can see the phase, so solid to a liquid, is melting, and that is an endothermic reaction. A liquid to a gas is vaporizing, that's endothermic. Gas to a liquid is condensing, which is exothermic. Liquid to a solid is freezing, which is exothermic. Solid to a gas is called sublimination, which is endothermic. And gas to a solid is deposition, which is exothermic. So then we can see if we have a gas, if it goes through deposition, that's going to a solid. A solid to a liquid is melting. Liquid to a gas evaporating. And we can see so heat absorbed is going to be anything with the red and heat released is anything with the blue. So if we look over here, deposition again, gas is to solid. So that is a exothermic reaction where heat is released. So that's what that means. Endothermic heat is absorbed, exothermic heat is released. So this is really just a picture of this chart. So now let's talk about chemical properties. So chemical properties may only be measured by altering the substance being measured. This includes such properties as water reactivity, ionization, solubility, pH, which is the power of hydrogen, and heat of combustion. Water reactive substances have a chemical reaction with water. Ionization energy is the measure of energy required to remove an electron from an out from an atom or molecule, and it's measured in joules. The measurement of solutions acidity and alkalinity is called pH. A pH less than seven is acidic, and a pH more than seven is alkaline. A pH of seven is considered neutral. Heat of combustion is the heat produced when one mole of a substance undergoes combustion with oxygen at constant pressure. Solubility is the chemical property that measures the ability of the substance to dissolve in a solvent. And a solvent is able to dissolve other substances, example water. Concentration or the amount of solute dissolved per liter can be computed by finding the ratio of solute to solvent. A solute is what is dissolved in the solvent. So over here we can see properties of matter are the properties determined without changing the identity of the substance? If yes, it's going to be a physical property. Does the property depend on the amount of substance? If it does, it's an extensive physical property like mass, volume, length, and shape. If not, it's an intensive physical property like color, melting point, boiling point, density. However, if the properties determined without changing the identity of the substance is no, then it's considered a chemical property because it's measured by altering the substance. So how does the substance react in the presence of air, acid, base, water, and other chemicals? Those are going to be its chemical properties. So let's talk about osmosis and diffusion. So both are examples of movement at the cellular level called passive transport. They do not require energy from the cell. Osmosis occurs when two solutions of unequal concentration are separated by a semi-permeable membrane, so that means certain things can come through and other things can't. This generally means that there's a higher concentration of water surrounding the cell than inside the cell. Water tends to move across the membrane from an area of low solution, solute concentration to more concentrated solution. This serves to equal the concentrations on each side of the membrane. Osmotic potential refers to the tendency of water to move across the permeable membrane. So the way I like to remember this is if you think like osmosis has to do with water. So if you have a semi-permeable membrane and you can see on this side there is much more sugar than on this side, what is going to happen is the water is going to move so that on both sides there's an equal amount of sugar per water. So if that makes sense, so if you think about that you want both these sides to be equal because you have a semi-permeable membrane but say sugar cannot go through the semi-permeable membrane, the other option is for water to come through so that this side gets diluted until they are equal. 
Diffusion occurs when particles from one area of high concentration move spontaneously to an area of low concentration. So with diffusion, what would happen is an area of high concentration, so say over here you can see there's a high concentration, what's going to happen is all of these particles are going to diffuse through the membrane onto the side until they're equal on both sides. So just think diffusion is the movement of particles and it's going from an area of high concentration. So whatever area has, because it wants it to be equal on both sides. So if you have a side that has a lot of particles and a side that doesn't have as much, those particles need to move so that both sides are balanced. So that's diffusion. Now osmosis, say you have one side with a lot of particles and one side without, but those particles cannot move because the membrane is only semi-permeable then what will happen is the water will move so that both sides become equal. And you can see that over here. So the water moved from this side to this side and it leads to this. Yes, there's more water on this side, but that's not what the semi-permeable membrane is worried about. It's worried about the, the both sides being equal. You don't want too many particles on one side and not a lot on the other, you want them to be equal. So yes, there's more water, but it's the same concentration of particles per unit of water, if that makes sense. So you can kind of see that here, they're equal, where this side it's all clumped together and then they're not equal over here. So characteristics of water, a water molecule is asymmetrical and therefore very polar. And we talked about this in previous modules. A polar molecule is a chemical species in which the distribution of electrons between the covalently bonded atom is not even, one end is positive and the other is negative. Water has a very high heat capacity. This is the degree to which the temperature of water changes when it gains or loses heat. Water also has a high heat evaporation, meaning it takes relatively large amounts of water to vaporize. And the solid form of water on its liquid form it floats on its liquid form. This is because ice is less dense than water. So hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are weaker than covalent and ionic bonds. And this again is some water molecules. So this is the hydrogen bond between the water molecules. Hydrogen bonds can form within a single molecule or between molecules. A water molecule is polar, meaning it is partially positive charged at one end and partially negative charged at the other. And hydrogen bonds tend to be weak. So we can see the slightly positive charge and slightly negative. So let's look at some states of matter. So the three states of matter can be transversed by the addition or removal of heat. In the solid state, ice, water is less dense than the liquid state, which is why ice floats. Gas assumes volume and shape of the container, low density, high compressibility, and very free moving molecular motion. Liquid, the volume remains constant, but it assumes the shape of the container, high density, virtually no compressibility, molecular motion, moves past each other very freely. And solids are, have a definitive volume, shape, high density, virtually no compressibility, molecular motion, and vibrates around a fixed position. So here are the three states of matter. We have solid, liquid, and gas. The solid is rigid, has a fixed shape, and a fixed volume. No matter if you turn this container over, move it around, that solid object is going to stay solid. However, liquid is not rigid, has no fixed shape, and has a fixed volume. So the amount of liquid in here will be equal. No matter if you move it around, it doesn't change its size or shape. If you pour it into a different container, it's still going to be the same volume, but it doesn't have a fixed shape. It will move freely throughout as you um, turn the container. Gas is not rigid, has no fixed shape and no fixed volume. So if you put this gas into a bigger container, it will expand to fill that container. You can also compress it down gas and put it into a smaller container. So let's talk about changes in states of matter. So a, stubs, a substance that under, is undergoing a change from solid to a liquid is said to be melting. If this change occurs in the opposite direction from liquid to solid, the change is called freezing. 
A liquid which is being converted to a gas is undergoing vaporization. The reverse process is known as condensation. Direct transition from gas to solid and solid to gas are much less common in everyday life, but they can occur given the proper conditions. And solid to gas conversion is known as sublimination, while the reverse is known as deposition. Evaporation is the change of state in a substrate from a liquid to gaseous form at the temperature below its boiling point, the temperature at which all molecules in a liquid are changed to gas through vaporization. Condensation is the, is the phase change in a substance from a gaseous form to a liquid form, and it is the opposite of evaporation and or vaporization. So again, this is that same chart we went over a couple slides ago, so you do want to make sure you have all of that memorized. And that is the end of this module, and I will see you in the next one. Make sure to take the quiz. Okay, bye.